Welcome to Docker on Microtech part 2, where we set up our first container. In part 1, we learned about the prerequisites to setting up a Docker container on RouterOS. We made sure that our device is of a supported architecture. We upgraded our router, installed the required package, and changed the device mode to enable container functionality. And finally, we formatted our USB drive to ext4 so that we can use it for our containers. Now in part 2, we are going to set up a simple PyHole container using a stock image. I will demonstrate you how to do it in two different ways and in the process we are going to learn a little bit about containers in general and you will get an idea of how they are implemented in router OS. Docker containers are a form of virtualization. They run on top of the host's kernel. Their access to the hardware is limited and they are isolated from one another. So in our application, all our containers will be using the same kernel as router OS and they will have some limited information about the system that they are running on. The containers do not have a direct access to our router's interfaces. So the first thing that we need to do whenever we set up a container is to create, to create a virtual interface. But before we do that, let's create a bridge for our Docker containers. This will serve as both as a portal of sorts into the otherwise isolated world of containers and it will also allow containers to communicate with each other over Ethernet. So we will assign an IP address to our bridge. Let's, uh, let's choose 172.17.0.1 and the interface is the Docker bridge uh, that we just made. Now let's create the virtual interface in the interface VEATH section. We'll name it VEATH one, give it the address 172.17.0.2 and the gateway is the bridge that we just created. Then obviously we need to add it as a port to our bridge. And finally, we will add a NAT rule for this address range so that all our containers will be able to access the internet. So I'll go on IP firewall NAT add chain source NAT action masquerade and source address is going to be our um, VEATH range, IP range. That is the networking part set up. Now we will define a couple of parameters that we can then pass on to a container. It is not mandatory to do it this way, but since we are going to be using a stock PyHole image, it will be easier this way. So the first thing, go to ENVS subsection. Here we can define environment variables. Those are just some container specific parameters that you can use for customization and we can create entire lists of variables grouped by names. As you can see on my screen, I have already added three for PyHole. TZ will set the time zone to Riga where I'm located, web password will set the password for the PyHole admin page and DNS mask user will set the username. You can just copy them from our help page or just type them out as they appeared on my screen. The other thing that we will define in advance are the mount points. So let's go to container mounts. Essentially, we are just going to have the following two locations within the container stored on our external drive. If your drive is also named disk1, you can just copy the exact same configuration as I have here and also found on the help page. Okay, we are now ready to add the actual container. The most simple method is to just pull it from the Docker registry. Go to uh, container config. Here again you can just copy the exact line that you see on my screen or on the help page uh, where we enter the registry URL and the temporary directory. After that your router knows where to look for docker images and you can add it to your system with add remote image equals pyhole slash pyhole column latest interface v1 root directory disk1 slash pyhole. Again, change the disk1 to your disk name if it's different. 
then the mounts we just created and our environment variable list. The image will be downloaded in the temporary directory that we specified when adding the registry and then it will get extracted. Once that is done, you can start your new container from the container section. This method of adding container is pretty good if the stock image is already good as it is and your device has access to the internet. The second method of adding a container is much like the first, but instead of pulling it from the registry using the remote image property, we are using the file property and extracting the image from a tar file that we manually copied to our router. Here is what you need to do to pull the correct image on a Linux desktop. If you open the terminal and type docker pull pyhole slash pyhole colon latest, which is the same keyword that we used before when pulling from our router, you are actually going to pull the image for the architecture of your computer, so that won't work. You need to follow up the keyword with an at symbol and then you need to paste the correct hash from the docker hub. So go on to hub.docker.com, find pyhole, click on tags, then look for latest and there you see a list of available architectures. Yours will likely be either ARM64 or ARM v7 if you have a 32-bit CPU. Click on the correct one. And now at the top you can see a line starting with digest. Just copy the whole thing starting with SHA to pull an image for this architecture. After that, you can execute the docker save command and you have yourself the image in a tar file that you can copy on your router. The final steps for the Pi-hole container is to set up port forwarding for the HTTP port so that you can access the web interface of your Pi-hole and then to set up the virtual interface address of your Pi-hole as your DNS server. Go to IP firewall NAT, add chain destination NAT action DST dash NAT protocol TCP Two address is the V interface address. Two ports is going to be port 80. Then DST address is going to be the IP of your router. By default, this will be 192.168.88.1. And DST port. Uh, we can pick any port that we would like to use for the Pi-hole web page. So I'm just gonna choose 888. Finally, enter slash IP DNS set servers equals 172.17.0.2. And if you did everything correctly, now when you enter the IP address of your router followed by a column and the port you natted, you should be presented with the Pi-hole admin page where you can log in with the current credentials you specified in the environment variables earlier and continue with setting up your Pi-hole configuration as usual. Now your Pi-hole should be ready to use. If you browse the web from any device on your network, Pi-hole will block ads on web pages based on blacklists you configured. Thank you for watching. In part 3, we're going to learn how to build custom containers. Make sure you don't miss out. Click the like, subscribe and the bell icon.